Crown Produce supplying select Canadian retailers. Crown Produce, proud sponsors of Canada West Football and Canadian University Countdown on Shaw. And welcome to another edition of Crown Canadian University Countdown. I'm Jim Mullen. Well, we had a barn burner in Halifax. We had an offensive explosion in Vancouver, but the big event was in Kingston, Ontario. And Mr. Andrew Wadden is all ready to tell you all about it. Andrew? Thanks, Jim. I'll be riding solo this week as Ryan Sullivan is out on assignment. You are absolutely right about this Queens and Western game. One of the best games, if not in the OUA, in the entire CIS. So let's get right to it. We head now to the campus of Queens University. Oh gosh, the lovely ladies, they're jacked up, as is the sold out student union section. Western would open up the scoring with a field goal, but this 30 yard strike from Billy McPhee to Giovanni Aprile puts the Gales on top. McPhee, he's liking it, as do the Queens faithful, who might have had a couple of adult pops before the game, eh, you don't know. 7-3 Queens. Move to the third queue, and the momentum shifts in the visitors' favorite, as Aprile can't handle the pass, and Powell Kruba picks up the pigskin out of midair, rumbles 30 yards, that's a pick six. Purple Ponies back on top by three. Western would add a rouge, but this 27-yard field goal from Dylan Walmsley puts the Gales down just one. On the very next series, the Stangs would march themselves down to the Queen's 25-yard line, but Donnie Marshall would get picked by Justin Baronatus to the fourth, and this puts Queen's in striking distance as Ryan Granberg easily runs through a gaping hole inside the Western Red Zone. On the very next play, Granberg goes 19 yards to the house. Queen's would add a two-point conversion they lead 18-11. However, the Stangs would get another shot at it. Under three to go on second and nine on their own 43-yard line. Marshall airs it out to his brother, Brian, who hauls in the ball, a 39-yard pickup. Check out the body control by Brian Marshall. The ball falls right in his lap, but he still manages to hold on. Now on third and short, Western tries to run it, but the Gales defense hold the fort. Queens escapes with a massive win and the capacity crowd, well, they were celebrating on campus that night. Despite Western rushing for close to 250 yards, they were unable to score a rushing touchdown. That makes it 11 consecutive regular season games that Queens has not allowed a rushing touchdown. That's phenomenal. The three-headed monster of McPhee, Granberg, and Shep Delane were big all night for Queens. The number one team in the nation traveled to Ottawa and struck early and often. First, Kyle Quinlan finds Brad Fushisato for a 30-yard score. Mack goes 80 yards in just 49 seconds on the drive. It's seven nada. Three minutes later, the duo hooked up once again, this time for 60 yards. Marauders lead 16 nothing. Second half now, and Mack puts the game away, already up by 10. Quinlan on play action finds Max Cameron for a 46-yard score. The Marauders take this one in a romp. Quinlan with yet another outstanding performance, tossing close to 350 yards and three touchdowns. His favorite target on the day, Fushisato, hauled in six catches for 161 yards and two TDs. Two one-and-one one teams faced off in Waterloo. A little Abba to get you in the mood for some Lions and Golden Hawks action. I know Jim Mullen's loving that. Late in the first quarter, and G-Hawks' Travis Eamon punches it in from one yard out to give Laurier its first lead of the season. Yeah, it only took you three weeks, boys. Shift to the second, and Eamon finds a wide open Tyrell Wilson, who goes off to the races, a massive 50-yard pickup, which leads to this beauty double fake from Eamon, who airs it out for Lance Freeman, who takes it to the house. G-Hawks now lead 17-3 at the half. First play of the second half, and Eamon loses the biscuit. The Lions recover, but can only muster a field goal. It's now 17-6. Just before the, the end of the quarter, Miles Lions Gibbon QB Miles Gibbon LeShane tosses a bomb to LaShane no Oldacre, who leaves the Laurier defenders in his rear view, score. going That's 81 yards for pay dirt. Touchdown. York now trails just like by just that. four. York. Shift to late in the fourth queue, and Eamon makes a costly mistake, tossing this interception to Chris States, who bobs and weaves his way into the end zone for a pick six. Lions take the lead with just two minutes remaining. 
Eamon would get the hook and in steps backup QB Steve Phantom who starts to march the purple and gold down the field. First, he hits Carson Beanie for a first down. Then he dishes it to Isaac Dell who picks up some more yards. Phantom finds Freeman once again. And well, let's let the Laurier announcer tell you what happens next. Hawks back in front and just need a stop and that they do as Anthony Petrucci makes a fantastic flying interception to seal the win for the G-Hawks. Steve Phantom came into the game in replacement of Travis Eamon in the third quarter and was solid completing 50% of his passes for 64 yards and one TD. However, the day belonged to Lance Freeman who picked up 100 all-purpose yards and two touchdowns. The Warriors didn't come out to play as Waterloo got manhandled by 30 by Guelph. Rob Farkuson with a beast of a game, rushing for 160 yards on 18 carries, scoring two touchdowns. Well, in the T dot, the Varsity Blues may have well have been the junior Varsity Blues as they got hammered 55 to 4 by Windsor. Austin Kennedy passes for 300 yards on 14 of 21 passes with two touchdowns. Mitch Denter rushing for 99 yards and the one major, while Jordan Braskachin was his usual self, hauling in four passes for 89 yards and one touchdown. So we take a look at the standings board in the OUA. Mack and Queens remain on top at a perfect 3-0. Western falls down a notch with its loss to the Gales, while the Golden Hawks picked up their first win of the season. We go west now with things around the CW starting to get interesting. One of the most interesting and perhaps puzzling teams in the conference took to its home field in search of its first win. We head to the campus of UBC on what was a beautiful day for football. Billy Green in the T-Birds lineup despite being injured last week. He faces off against Bryce McCall and the Saskatchewan Huskies. Early in the first queue, UBC up 3-0. Drew Burko finds Kit Hillis for this 11-yard pickup. Remember that name, but look closely as T-Birds number 18, Thomas Harris gets a piece of Hillis's face mask, which puts the Huskies in the Birds' red zone. A few plays later, and another UBC penalty results in a first and goal, and Saskies backup QB Chase Bradshaw calls his own number, punches it in. Huskies with their first lead, it's 7-3. Shift to the second queue now, and it's Hillis and Burko once again. The redshirt freshman pivot tosses a beauty ball right into the outstretched hands of Hillis. Outstanding grab right there. Saskatchewan lead by 11. Very next series for the T-Birds. Green goes to work. First, it's Daniel English grabbing 16 yards. Then on a screen play, Green connects with Taylor Souster, who scampers for 26, bringing the ball down to the Sasky 32. The very next play, on play action, Green to David Scott, another big pickup for UBC, and the home side is marching. Three plays later, Schouster completes the drive, plunging in for the major, much to the delight of the Chippendales crew in the front row. I think Molly was somewhere in there. T-Birds now down just four. Very next play, check the bottom of your screen. Huskies would then cough up the pigskin. UBC would recover, which proved to be costly. As the birds march their way down to the goal line, and Green takes it in for the major. UBC takes his first lead of the game. Green is fired up. But hold on one minute. Green Dogs next play. It's Burko and Hillis once again, this time for 46-yard pickup. Sasky now inside the T-Birds 25-yard line. Four plays later, and Hillis caps off the drive with this unreal grab right in the corner of the end zone. That puts the Huskies up by four. To the fourth we go, Birds now up by one, and Jordan Grieve brings the hometown crowd to its feet. Second and six play from the six, Green floats it into the end zone, touchdown UBC, what a catch by Jordan Grieve. A perfectly placed ball from Green to an outstretched Grieve, UBC extends its lead to nine, but hold on Thunderbirds fans. Sasky wasn't done yet as Burko finds who else but Hillis who hauls in his third TD of the day. Green Dogs trail by just two. After UBC goes two and out, the Huskies next drive would end with this 15-yard touchdown from Mitch Stevens. Huskies now up by five. What a game. The T-Birds would get this 37-yard field goal from Thomas Mole who cut the lead now to two. 
with just under four minutes to go in the game. UBC with the ball. Green picks up this first down. Two plays later, he hits Grieve for another fresh set of downs. Very next play, Green to Joey Gabrick, but Luke Teal lays a nasty hit on Gabrick. The ball pops loose. Green Dogs recover, and that's the ball game. The Huskies tacked on a field goal in the dying seconds to earn their second win on the season. Drew Burko with a massive day, tossing 328 yards and four touchdowns. But Kit Hillis was the star of the show, grabbing three of those touchdowns, stacking up 224 yards on 14 receptions, which is the second most receptions in a game in Canada West history. Just one behind Regina Ram, Chad Goldie, who had 15 back in 07. After the game, our Stu Walters caught up with the player of the game. 14 receptions, three touchdowns, 224 yards. Uh, talk about your day and, and your quarterback. <laughs> when you put it like that, it sounds pretty good. You know, Drew, Drew's putting that ball in a great spot for me, so it's easy for me to make plays, and he, he loves throwing it to me, and I'll just I'll keep catching that ball and running with it. The number two ranked Calgary Dinos in Manitoba to face the seventh ranked Bisons. The home team down nine in the second quarter, but this pass from Cam Clark to Xavier Johnson would cut that lead to two, as Johnson looking like old school Keyshawn Johnson goes 80 yards for pay dirt. Manitoba's right back in this. However, Dinos QB Eric Dulesky would take over in the second half, as here you see two of his three passing touchdowns on the day. Calgary breezes through the Bisons to remain undefeated. Dulesky throws 329 yards on the day, while Chris Dobko hauls in 13 passes for 182 yards and two majors. The Regina Rams are on a roll after picking up their second win in a row, this time over the Golden Bears of Alberta. Mark Mueller was stellar once again, connecting on 26 of 38 passes for 316 yards and three TDs. Mike Kiapwe with a big day on the ground, rushing for 124 yards in the win. Calgary holds the fort as the only unbeaten team in the conference. Despite the loss, Manitoba remains tied for second with the surging Rams and Huskies. Well, who would have guessed this? UBC, after three weeks of action, are still in search of a victory. Interlock play this week between the AUS and the RSEQ as four of the five games played were played between the two conferences. But we'll start in Montreal where two Quebec teams locked horns. The unbeaten carry bands put their perfect record on the line against Bishops. We pick this one up late in the second queue where Michael Davidson blows the game open for the carry bands as he takes this punt return to the sideline and he's off 73 yards for the major. Montreal, much to the delight of the hometown fans, take a 14-0 lead. And just before the end of the half, they add seven more as Alexander Nadu Pius finds Felix Prevost. Caribans take a 21-0 lead into halftime. Second half, and the Gators finally break the goose egg as Ryan McCullough scampers in for the major, gives a little jig dance, but the celebrations wouldn't last for long as Pius puts the game away for Montreal, calling his own number and going up the gut for a 58-yard score. Carabans take this one with ease, stomping Bishops by 30. This real-life Smurf is going home happy. What do you think the chances are that this dude's got a girlfriend? Pius with a monster game, tossing 161 yards. I don't think it's very good. Connecting on 14 of 23 passes, but it was the ground attack that proved costly as the 50-year QB rushed for just over 100 yards and the two majors. What a finish between Sherbrooke and St. Mary's. We go to the final two minutes of the game. Vare A. Orr down by nine, but this would make it just two as Jeremy Rock connects with Ryan Sullivan's favorite player, Gabrielle Goulet. Then with just 18 seconds left, William Dion nails this 25 yard field goal for the win. What a comeback for the green and gold. Rock tosses 380 yards and two TDs, connecting on 41 of 58 passes. Goulet catches eight passes for 115 yards and one touche. The Huskies' only touchdown came off an 80-yard fumble return from Marvin Golding. So McGill finally breaks its 23-game losing streak. Congratulations. Our man out east, J.P. Schwarre, caught up with McGill head coach Clint Utley and got his reaction to finally breaking the Redman's dubious streak. I uh, loved the first quarter. I loved half the second quarter. I uh, wasn't really happy from that point on, but it's great for the seniors. Awesome for the seniors. The Stingers stung the X-Men by 21. Reed Quest threw for 266 yards and three touchdowns. Concordia faces Bishops next week. Rouge Or remain unbeaten, easily handling Acadia 31-7. Christian Grayon connected on 22 of 36 passes for 220 yards and two majors. Laval spread its offense out with six receivers catching two passes 
or more. Laval and Montreal keep their unblemished records intact while Concordia goes a game above 500 with a win. Sherbrooke keeps its winning streak alive now at two games in a row while McGill and Bishops are both winless. Acadia and St. FX suffer their first losses of the year while Mount Allison and St. Mary still can't get off the schneid. Well, Jim, that was the story around the CIS and what was another exciting week of action. However, it's hard to not look ahead to that massive match next week in the OUA against two of the nation's top teams in Queens and Mac. When we return, we'll take a look at a kid who's living out the Quebecois dream. You're watching Crown Canadian University Countdown. <laughs> 